This is the day that our God has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it as we gather together to worship the triune God. We greet you in the spirit of joy and with thankful hearts for all our God has done. Whether you are sitting in the pews or joining us virtually, we welcome you to worship at St. Paul's United Church of Christ. Please know that no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. Today is the third day of the Epiphany season as we celebrate the illuminating presence of the light of the world. Many churches today honor the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. on the occasion of his birth date. We all support the dream for a better day when things like racism and discrimination are things of the past. We're so blessed with great musicians here at St. Paul's, which today will include a special vocal solo by Michelle Eich. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we enjoy the special prelude that Kristen has prepared for us today.
Thank you. Please stand as you are able, whether in body or in spirit, and join me in the call to worship. There are no words for what this witness means, only the wonder and grace. Celebrate the prophets and visionaries. We awaken to the sound of one voice. There is no way to know what this following will take, only the hope that it is leading us deeper into the heart of love. We cherish the risk takers and the tide turners. We celebrate their witness. There is no telling when the struggle will end. We believe in a future we cannot yet see. Gather together by our faith and to pray that God may give us the courage in the struggle for peace, justice, and equality for all God's people that we may dream. If you would please turn to your bulletin insert, we're going to sing Dream God's Dream.
Please join me in the prayer of invocation. God of many gifts and one spirit, we know that sometimes it is easier to celebrate a single prophetic voice than to honor the movements that give rise to freedom. When in our desire to honor leaders, we gloss over all those who make change possible, forgive us. When we lift up people like the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as a visionary and leader and ignore or believe that we have a part to play in making his dreams a reality, forgive us. May our worship help to empower us that we might take up our roles in the movement toward racial justice, knowing that each of us has unique gifts to offer, and together we are the Spirit's movement toward love. Amen. Good morning, St. Paul's family. <laughs> um, all Creatures of Our God and King is a favorite, favorite hymn of mine, where all of our voices are lifted in praise of God and his creation. This hymn can be found on page 23 of our hymnal. I would like to invite you to join in singing this beautiful hymn with me. I will be singing verses 1, 2, and 3. And then I'd like to invite you to join in on verses 4 and 5. So sing loud, sing proud, and sing to the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> Creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, Alleluia, O burning sun with golden beam and silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Oh, rushing wind that art so strong, you clouds that sail in heaven along. Oh, praise him, alleluia. Oh, rising morn in praise rejoice. Oh, lights of evening find a voice. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. O oh, flowing water, pure and clear, make music for your Lord to hear. Alleluia, Alleluia. Oh, fire so masterful and bright, 
providing us with warmth and light. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. 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 Here we go. All you who are of tender heart, Forgiving others, take your part. Sing praises, hallelujah. All you who pain and sorrow bear, praise God and on Him cast your care. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him, hallelujah. Alleluia, Alleluia. Let all things their Creator bless and worship Him in humbleness. Oh, praise Him, Alleluia. Oh, it's praise the Father, praise the Son. Praise the Spirit, three in one. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. 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 Thank you. Um, we're going to forego our children's chat today. Uh, and uh, just so you know, the scripture that we're reading today is not from the lectionary. You know, I do tend to follow the lectionary, uh, so I did stray a little bit this, this time. So, But let's go ahead and have our scripture reading then. Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. The wedding at Cana. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to me and to you? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the person in charge of the banquet. So they took it. When the person in charge tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, that person called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then inferior wine after the guests have become drunk, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed him. Grace and peace be to you all from God, our creator, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray this day that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be acceptable to our God, who is our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Okay, trivia time. In 1979, what wine label used the slogan, we will sell no wine before it's time? Good guess. Good guess. Paul Masson. Remember the commercial? And who was the spokesperson and the uh, celebrity in the commercial? Orson Welles. We will serve no wine before it's time. 
John's gospel provides the perfect story to pair with the classic slogan, which is, of course, our text for today. Scholars have concluded that the gospel of John is a book filled with signs. And the wedding at Cana is actually considered one of the most memorable of signs, where the wedding feast is characterized as a sign or symbolic of God's reign of love. John tells us that on the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and John also tells us that Jesus and his disciples were also invited. And the story goes that when the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to her son, Jesus, they have no wine. Now, it's funny how Jesus actually appears to be a little annoyed, replying, woman, he doesn't call her mom or mother. It's a woman, what concern is that to you or to me? And if you use Eugene Peterson's translation in the message, it reads like this. Is that any of our business, mother? <clears throat> Yours or mine? This isn't my time. Don't push me. Perhaps, like every good Jewish mother, Mary just wanted to show off her son's special powers to make a good impression. Perhaps, we speculate. No matter how we interpret Mary's intentions, Mary does seem a little pushy, making Jesus feel a little uneasy with the whole situation. But maybe, maybe it's just that Mary doesn't want to stand idly by and watch an injustice take place. They're out of wine. Maybe she doesn't want to watch the groom and his bride be disgraced in front of all their guests. Or maybe, just maybe, Mary thought it was Jesus' time. Maybe Mary thought it was Jesus' time to shine forth as a beacon to the world. Because up till now, it was, serve no wine before it's time. But it was clear that this was his time. And so in response to his mother's compassionate plea, Jesus does what Mary hopes he will do. Jesus saved the party. In other words, there was a need, and he did something to fulfill that need. He replenished the wine. How symbolic, how sacramental. And when the wedding coordinator took a sip of the new wine, he exclaimed, wow, everybody I know begins with their finest wines, and after the guests have had their fill, or gets slightly inebriated, after the guests have had their fill, brings in the cheap stuff, usually, but you've saved the best till now. Redemption. The combined efforts of Jesus and Mary thus became a sign of the times for all times. And it was totally driven by Mary's hope to stand up against public humiliation and turn an unjust situation into a robust illustration of God's future reign of love. So on this eve of Martin Luther King's birthday, I would like to offer yet another example of God's reign of love enacted through the interplay between the mother of the freedom movement, a young woman named Rosa Parks, and the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., on an ordinary day in Montgomery, Alabama, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on the bus or to give in to one more instance of public humiliation. 
a sign of the times was needed. And in that moment, Rosa Parks provoked a movement. Her actions demanded that the time had come. And in a very real sense, her actions prompted King's entry as the robust wine that was needed. And that response became the first of Dr. King's unforgettable signs, the first of so many moments of shedding a hopeful light on the situation, offering powerful signs in very ordinary human situations. It was Dr. King's time. It was the inaugural moment of the civil rights movement. For both Jesus, or for Jesus, Rosa Parks, and MLK, the common thread connecting their witness was compassion for others and the desire to transform the status quo through the power of persistence driven by love likened to the experience of tasteless water being turned into a robust wine rich in vigor. While Martin Luther King Jr. did not change water into wine, he did change minds and hearts and the system. His work for racial equality. King accomplished his mission and purpose in his time. But it wasn't enough. Because sadly, 55 years, 55 years since his death, our nation is still deeply divided over issues of race. We are still struggling to live out our nation's central creed that all men are created equal. And that's why we need to gather to watch films like Selma. As a sober reminder of where we have been and how far we still have to go. And then there are stories of lesser known contributors to improving human rights. Historical figures like John Woolman Anyone heard the name John Woolman before? He lived from 1720 to 1772, so you understand the time and the context. John Woolman was a Quaker who lived in colonial New Jersey where the accumulation of wealth depended in large part on owning slaves. Woolman a tailor, and one of the few that did not own slaves, was torn by the blatant contradiction between the Quaker belief in human equality and the fact that many Quaker gentry were slaveholders. But he refused to make that tension disappear by simply ignoring it, like many did. Instead, Woolman insisted that his community Hold that tension. That's an important phrase for you to think about and to remember for the rest of this message. Holding that tension. And holding that tension with honesty and resolve it by agreeing to flee, free their slaves. That's what he wanted his community to do. Of course, Quakers make decisions by consensus not majority rule. And Woolman proposed, uh, proposed it at a meeting of the Quaker society, community. However, his local Quaker community did not reach a consensus. However, moved by Woolman's persistence on the matter, they did take him seriously enough to offer their support in his efforts to raise awareness. And for the next 20 years, Woolman traveled up and down the East Coast, visiting friends, capital F, in their homes and in their workplaces and in their Quaker meetings. 
And he spoke fervently about the contradiction between what their faith said and the owning of slaves. He spoke fervently about the contradiction or this tension between their faith and the practice of owning slaves. And though he paid a great, pi a great price for his consist consistent witness, Woolman held the tension until the Quakers finally acted, becoming the first religious community in America to free their slaves. Some 80 years prior to the Civil War, in 1783, the Quakers petitioned Congress to correct, as they put it, the complicated evils and unrighteous commerce created by the enslavement of human beings. It's an historical fact that the Quakers played a key role in establishing what we know as the Underground Railroad, a movement to assist runaway slaves. Now, the woman's story underscores a point that is critical to the central thesis of Parker Palmer's book. And I mentioned Parker Palmer because this little this little bio on John Woolman is included in Parker Palmer's book. Uh, the book is entitled, um, somewhere I have the title of the book here. I'll come back to it. Anyway, Parker's, uh, Parker Palmer's point as he lifts up the John Woolman story, is that holding tension creatively does not mean indecision or inaction. He recognizes that decisions must be made at every level of human life. However, decisions on important matters must not be made hastily or simply because we're impatient especially when diverse opinions are being heavily debated with the underlying desire to resolve our differences quickly. It is a human tendency. We don't like tension. But Parker Palmer is suggesting that we hold tension long enough until we can reach a reasonable decision or compromise. So if the John Woolman story means anything at all, holding the tension long enough, it means that the tension-holding heart is not only a powerful source of compassion and healing, but that the tension-holding heart is also a source of wisdom. but that the tension-holding heart is also a source of wisdom we learn in the process. It helps by providing the wisdom needed for us to be able to make difficult decisions. Kind of like the premise of not serving wine before its time. And this is, of course, a timely message for those of us impatiently waiting for the transformation of our world, especially our nation, and I'll even add the church. We just want to fix it now. But there's something to be said for holding that tension and letting time and wisdom help us in making important decisions as we imbibe in the good wine of the Gospels. Let us remember that at its core, the incarnate word of John's Gospel insists on us behaving compassionately. And also let us remember that at the heart of the John Woolman story is the invitation to be patiently active, to hold tension in life-giving ways as hard as that may be, especially when we are stuck in the midst of it and we want 
things to move forward. We want to make decisions quickly. But allowing time and opportunities for that tension to teach us and provide us with insight and information and wisdom. As Dr. King once said, the time is always right to do something right. The time is always right to do something right. And the time is always right to work for a more just and equitable world. I think we're going to wait a week to watch the movie Selma. We sort of made that decision before the service today. So we'll plan on next Sunday after church so that more people will be able to benefit. But one of the things that when you watch the movie, you will remember or you will, uh, you will observe a scene in the movie where tensions are pretty high uh, and uh, Dr. King is pretty much at wit's end, the end of his rope, very distressed. And he gets on the phone and he calls his friend Mahalia Jackson, who sings a song over the phone to him. And it's a song in the hymn that is quite familiar to us. So we're going to uh, hear that song in a prayerful way. And then we will move into our time of prayer. The song is Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows dream, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone Hear my cry, hear my call Hold my hand lest I fall Take my hand, precious Lord When the shadows appear and the night draws near and the day is almost gone, at the river I'll stand, guide my feet, hold my hand. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me
this time I would just ask if there are any prayer concerns that are on your hearts. We'll just share them informally here. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the beauty of this day. In spite of the cold temperatures, and the roads that make it difficult for us to travel. There's much to be thankful for, and we are grateful for a warm place where we can gather, but we're also thankful for those who can worship from their homes the safety and the warmth of their homes. We are aware, loving God, that there's pain and anxiety among us. As a society, as a faith community, as we struggle with the many issues that are before us, and help us to truly be people that are concerned that we may be compassionate in all ways. That we also learn how to manage tension. For we know sometimes it can be difficult and cause more anxiety. And so we pray that you give us all a sense of understanding and discernment. For discernment is a way that we can all participate in the process and reflect on things as they are and pray for ways that we can make a difference. We give you thanks for the legacy of people like Dr. King, John Woolman, Rosa Parks, who all stood up against the status quo in order to work for justice. We pray this day for those who are sick in body and who need your healing touch and your healing presence. Let's sing it together. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn Through the storm, through the night, through the storm, through the night Lead me on, lead me on to the light Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me Hear our prayers, O God, incline your ear to us and grant us your peace as we pray together now the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, we greet you with a warm winter welcome. We are thankful for the many newsworthy happenings as we celebrate the community of Christ that we are here at St. Paul's United Church of Christ. My name is Ruth Costello. And I want to thank you for joining us for worship today, either in person or online. If you haven't already done so, please sign the attendance book located in your pews and pass it along to the other folks in your pew. We could not sustain our ministry without the generous support of our members and friends. 
If you do not choose to drop your offering in the offering plates during the musical offertory, you can always find the donation link on our website, or you can always mail in your gift. With the start of the new year, the worship committee is happy to announce our first Faith, Food, and Fellowship Sunday as an alternative Sunday worship experience. On February 11th, all are invited to gather downstairs in the fellowship hall at 945 for some informal fellowship and a communal breakfast. At 10.30, an abbreviated worship service with music and liturgy and a shortened sermon will begin, but remaining in the fellowship hall. Our goal is to provide a fresh alternative service to re-engage members through fellowship. The Church Life Committee has offered to host the February 11th date, but we're looking for volunteers to help host the breakfast portion of the morning for future Faith, Food, and Fellowship Sundays which, until further notice, will take place on the second Sunday of the month. Please look for the sign-up sheet and help make this a successful event and to spread the work out over the whole congregation. In addition, next Sunday is the kickoff meeting for the new adult fellowship group. Join us in the lounge after service for details and to hear about our first outing. If you cannot attend, Give your email address to Lena to be added to the group, and we will see you next week. As always, we hope you will take time to enjoy some refreshments and visit with church friends immediately following worship in the narthex. Uh, the goodies today are provided by Deb Patterson and Marcia Britt, so thank you very much. Are there any other additional announcements from you? Just to reinforce, yes, um, we did decide we'll watch the movie Selma next Sunday when we have more people. Uh, and uh, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but the Parker Palmer book, the title of the book is Healing the Heart of Democracy. Um, good, good read if you uh, are not familiar with the works of Parker Palmer. He certainly uh, has a lot of good things to say. Um, Healing the Heart of Democracy is the name of the book. Thank where you. Where he refers to John Woolman. <clears throat> And now please join me in our call to offering. There can be no flourishing for some of us without liberation for all of us. Our offering gives the opportunity to invest in our collective liberation. May our giving be a revelation of God's love, made known and being made known in our midst. is not correct. It needs someone with a voice, and I don't have that today. So this is No Rocks a Crying by Rollo Dilworth.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. God of grace and mercy, in the words of Dr. King, all life is interrelated. We give you thanks. We are all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality. We give you praise. We are tied in a single garment of destiny. We offer our hearts. Use our gifts, therefore, to empower us to lean into this reality and this calling more and more fully until we become the salvation we are dreaming of. Amen. and as legend would have it, the three kings mentioned in Matthew 2 were anything but royalty as they humbly came to pay homage to the newborn king because the only real kings in the story are Herod and Jesus. 
Ironically, King Herod exemplified the sort of king whom Jesus later denounced. He was a tyrant who lorded over those he ruled rather than serving them. By contrast, the infant Jesus was helpless and vulnerable and a ruler whose power was hidden in humility and driven by his love for the people. Therefore, may we follow this king and not the tyrants and power-driven, self-righteous schemers of our times. And may we go home by another way. If you will look in your bulletin, there's a chorus that we're going to have you sing, uh, and there's a couple of verses. Um, could we have an F sharp? I just want to get Spirit, take us home. Take us home by another way. Take us long way round the tyrants and their schemes. Give us strength to walk. Show us dreams of a better day. And we'll pave the way with justice going home by another way. The mountains and the hills made low, the rough places made plain, the tyrants thrown down from their schemes till only love remains. Here we go. Spirit, take us home. Take us home by another way. Take us long way round the tyrants and their schemes. Give us strength to walk. Show us dreams of a better day, and we'll pave the way with justice, going home by another way. No offerings for billionaires to make them richer still. Bring all your frankincense and myrrh that the hungry may be filled. Spirit, take us home. Take us home by another way. Take us long way round the tyrants and their schemes. Give us strength to walk. Show us dreams of a better day. And we'll pave the way with justice, going home by another way. So when the Proud Boys and the clan ask where, ask where the Christ child lies, just tell them that you'll let them know next time you're passing by. Spirit, take us home. Take us home by another way. Take us long way round the tyrants and their schemes. Give us strength to walk. Show us dreams of a better day, and we'll pave the way with justice, going home by another way. So when things get tough and feet are tired, we'll know it'll be okay, cause we'll pave the way with justice, going home by another way.